Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to change the spindle bearings and the blades on my 2003 42 inch cut Murray riding lawnmower with an 18 horsepower OHV AVS engine. I picked this up for a couple hundred bucks off of Craigslist and uh, needed a little bit of work but uh, it ran when I got it and it actually cut the grass and everything. But after using it a couple times, it's like, it's time to do a really good inspection on it. And that's when I discovered that the spindles were a little tight and the blades were woefully damaged and just needed some trimming. So, today to uh, help me do this, <laughs> Star Trek fan of course, and you, what you need to do the job so far is some PB Blaster, uh, SAE wrenches, English, and if you uh, want, you could probably use some metrics on it. I think most of the sizes, uh, one of the wrenches will fit. You'll need a couple blocks of wood to remove the blades. I'll show you how to do that. Don't think we're going to need the hammer or the torque tips, but we brought them anyways. So, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. Uh, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and put some PB Blaster here on the spindles. And let's get this one over here. No, we don't need to worry about that one. Just this one. And the other side, well, I already had the blades off the other day that when I did the inspection. And the spindles actually turn, but they're kind of rough and they're tight. And it is a 2003 and it's been, the mower's been heavily used. So I decided it was time to go ahead and uh, change the bearings while we were at it. So anyways, uh, let me go ahead and flip this thing over and then we'll get started back on it. And we've got this thing standing up on end. It's best to have an assistant when doing this, but you don't have to if you can figure out a way to prop it up. And what you have to do in order to get the spindle nut off, this one right here, is after you put a little bit of PB Blaster on it, because they get corrosion and things on them, and they, you know, they get a little tough to get off. What you do is you come over and before you take the blade off, you put a block of wood on there and make sure you know that it's up there and this turns uh, counterclockwise or off when it's just off and you'll, you'll see when you when you're moving this this nut over here uh, counterclockwise it forces the blade into the block of wood which gives you leverage uh, however sometimes they are a little stubborn so you can use uh, a double uh, open end box wrench set and use the extra wrench as some extra leverage on it now a word of caution on this is uh, when you're moving these if you get a loft center a little bit it'll want to go and fall off and if you're not ready for it it'll it'll give you problems so anyways let's go ahead and uh, loosen this one up there it is it wasn't that bad so but I, I loosen it up a little bit for the video to help things along once you get the uh, once you get the nut off and loose, then you can go ahead and uh, remove the blade in the same manner. Uh, removing the blade, uh, you do the same thing. Except when you're looking at it this way, if I went down, it would be tightening it. So what you do is you go ahead and remove the block, and you put the block on this side this time, and then you take the blade and you go the other direction with it. Let's see if I can get it to come down here and sit. There we go. Hold it there. Go ahead and use the double wrench method like I showed you. There you go. Sorry if I got a little out of the thing there. There you go. Alright. Hold on to the deck and I'll, I'll go ahead and... Okay, now that we've uh, got the nuts and everything loose on these, and uh, we double, we used the double wrench method. We got these loose. We got these loose over here. Uh, all you have to do is just go ahead and take these off. Now, take these off. This other one, sorry. And uh, the block of wood over there definitely, definitely helps when you're putting the blade on or taking it off. I don't know what the actual torque spec is for it, 
but I just reef it really good until it's good and snug and then I go a little bit past that and I drop the water. And if you're not sure what blade to use, uh, you can just go online and look up Murray Parts or even go on eBay and uh, look up the part numbers sometimes and they'll, they'll be alternate part numbers. And sometimes they'll even stamp them on the blades themselves. This one's 95100 and I went and I bought some compatible ones which are made by steel and I'll show those when we go to put them on. Anyways now that we got these off uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start working on uh, getting these these other uh, pulleys off and the other items off. I don't know if they just pull out. This is the first time I've tried to actually take this off. Should probably go ahead and remove the uh, the belt but it's not really in my way so I didn't worry about it too much this right here has got a little rubber lip on it and you just pull that and it comes off and to get the bearing out we already got this side out over here and actually it feels pretty good I mean it's not grindy it's not it doesn't have any problems um, you can push on it side to side it doesn't grind it, it's actually a good bearing and just in case uh, you're not sure what the bearing number is that you need to get let's see if I can show it in the sunlight not sure um, there it is I don't know if you guys can see that or not it's 6203 dash 2 D L R S and basically any bearing that's 6203 it's double sealed it's probably gonna work anyways so you can replace those and what the 6200 series is is it's got a uh, um, I'm pretty sure it's a high speed bearing uh, they use them a lot in uh, idler pulleys and vehicles and stuff like that too so it's a perfect bearing for this and in order to get this uh, the bearing out on the other side over here what I did is uh, I went ahead and I put put the nut back on this to protect the threads and then I just tapped on it with a hammer after I put some PB blaster on it too of course another <coughs> another uh, spot for PB blaster can't say enough about this stuff I love it man and this was actually uh, something I learned from uh, another youtuber uh, a guy I can't even remember the guy's name right now but he does the uh, power stroke help on YouTube and he's got a, uh, a business someplace back east or Midwest I'm not sure but uh, he also has a website for you those of you guys who have uh, diesels powerstrokehelp.com and he uses YouTube to show his training videos and his uh, help videos and they're great and I learned that from him and thank you mr. PB you know or uh, mr. Uh, power stroke help little plug for you there so anyways once uh once I got uh, once I got this side out then I put the the nut back on this side and I started tapping on it and the bearing started coming out and uh, I use it uh, sideways on the hammer so that I'm not you know dinging into the ears dude all right here we go just tap it and uh, and it'll come out like that now when you go to install them you never want to beat on the center uh, when, uh, the center of the bearing itself and since I'm replacing I'm not worried about it. And what I mean by beating on the center is you don't ever want to remove a bearing that you have to replace by beating on the center here or anywhere in this uh, this area here uh, what you want to use is you want to use a socket about the same size as the outside diameter and all your work for pulling removing bearings should be on this outside ring that way there's no uh, uh, horizontal torsion or whatever they call that on the outside there which can actually cause this case right here to uh, crack or shatter on the outside and that would sort of end your repair right there so <clears throat> anyways we got the bearings out and they actually look pretty good um, the other thing you might want to think about and I know there's uh, one on one of these somewhere uh, there it is I'm gonna use the other one since it's a little more visible um, it's right here this right here 
is a grease fitting and this one looks shot so um, I didn't go to the store and get them so I'm gonna leave them for now and I'll change them later but uh, anyways uh, those you need to grease those every now and then look in your owner's manual I don't know what the frequency is for it how often you have to do it but you know you might want to actually been heavily used so but uh, anyways once that's done uh, you can go ahead and uh, remove the nuts and that whole shaft will count. And notice that there is a difference in the shaft. This has a real like fine thread or fine spline. And this side over here has a coarse spline. And the coarse spline corresponds to the coarse spline in, in, in your pulley here. And the splines are important so that uh, when the blades are cutting and they're hitting, they don't strip, strip this thing out and cause the belt to slip on it. And... Uh, so your motor doesn't, you know, have any problems running and your deck doesn't have problems cutting. If, if these splines are stripped out on yours, you might want to think about uh, getting a replacement pulley for that. And that part number is right here on the side, 94199. So anyways, that's enough for right now. Uh, we're going to go for a short period and I'll get the other blade and the other bearings and show you the installation on those. 